The Lenovo Legion Go represents the biggest leap in handheld gaming performance that we've ever seen. How long have I been into handheld gaming? This long, guys. Look how far we've come. This takes the popular formula trailblazoned by Valve's Steam Deck, an already comedically large device, and takes it one step further, making something absolutely gargantuan. Now, how can you manage to dwarf the Steam Deck? Something that already makes the Nintendo Switch look like a cell phone. That's how tiny this thing looks. But for this, almost ridiculous increase in size, you also get a similarly ridiculous increase in power. It has higher resolution screen, higher refresh rate, and an extreme amount of power that's gonna be able to take your FPS higher than any other device. The Steam Deck is fantastic, and it still has a lot of things that I like better than this new release, but in terms of raw power and screen size and screen refresh rate, this thing is still king. Although this thing is very close to the same width, it is much, much taller. If you put these things together, you can kind of see like how much taller that thing is, that the software that they use, the Lenovo Legion software, is essentially garbage. It looks very similar to the Steam Deck's UI, but they have not replicated any of the ease of use or quality of life things in there. You kind of met to this home screen. Now, I don't own any of these games, and it's showing them to try to get me to buy them. That's not what Steam Deck really does. Now, if I want to go into my library, I can click in here, and it doesn't look nearly as nice as the Steam Deck, and it's kind of clunky, and I really don't like it. Thankfully, though, in the newest version, you can actually opt to not boot directly into this. So my recommendation is to just not even use this at all. I turned on that setting to not put it by default. Don't love how this is all the way at the edge. Uh, so it gives you a hand holding position of like down here, whereas Steam Deck and a lot of other ones put the controllers a little bit in so you can have a bit of a more natural holding position. Now because of the weight of this thing and because of the curve of this, it's not curved as nicely as the Steam Deck, meaning that this very sharp piece ends up being where a lot of the weight of this device sits on. So if you're holding it with your finger like this, all that weight is going to like this position of your finger, which is not the most comfortable. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this. So what you want to do to alleviate that is get used to really like pushing a little bit with your palms so that you can rest more of that weight here in the meat of your hand. It's something that takes a little bit of getting used to. I really did not find it comfortable at first, but after about 10 or 12 hours, I was pretty much used to it and it's fine now. I still highly prefer the layout and controls of the Steam Deck. The fan positions on the, Le on the Lenovo Legion Go are actually good. You have one blowing up and away from you, the user, a couple of ones back here, and notice how far away these are. So if you have this resting on your lap or on your stomach, if you're laying down, this is gonna, not gonna be blowing it straight into your body, which some of those other handhelds do. So that is a big plus. It does feel premium, much more like a laptop than a lot of these other devices, but this sort of a slick material does attract fingerprints. The hinge is outstanding best in class by far. It's very sturdy. You move it to a location and it's gonna stay in place, no problem at whatever angle. So if you did want a game and set this up as a little screen for yourself, you can do it, no problem at all. Because this has so much power though, you can use a dock like this one that I would normally use for the Steam Deck with an HDMI out and connect to a monitor and still get a good 144 hertz performance out of a lot of this. Or you can plug, kind of connect it up to something like this to put in a USB mouse or keyboard. Now this does have the feature where you take the controllers off much like the Switch. It has these little buttons right here. Push it and then you just kind of Pull it, it doesn't feel natural. It's not a sliding motion like the switch is. Once you have it off, it just feels like you're about to break it every time that you wanna take these things off. You could game kinda of like this, 
which is a little strange at first. I don't know if I could play a shooter game like this, but it does have the mode where you put it into here and play like a mouse, kind of like that. I don't think I'm ever gonna use that either. So the whole disconnecting controllers is mostly a novelty for me and a lot of other people. If I was gonna play like with this on a table and set it up, I would just use a regular controller. The buttons themselves are okay. The D-pad is very shallow and it just doesn't feel that great. But for most games, it's probably just fine. I don't know if I would play like a Street Fighter style game with this. It feels junky. I don't like how slick it is. Your finger wants to just slide it past it. These buttons uh, over here are fine, A, B, X, Y. And it does have this little touchpad for mouse controls in Windows. I don't love the location of it, but that's not really that big of a deal. I rarely ever use one, much less both of these on my Steam Deck. So it's just kind of nice to have in one of those computing situations where you need it, but it's not something you're gonna use every day. If I needed to do some major settings overhauls, I would just hook up a keyboard and mouse and go about it. Ports at the top, you have your SD card slot up here and USB-C in order to charge or connect to other peripherals. And I like that you also have another USB-C at the bottom. The back buttons on the back, I never use these on handhelds, so I can't really comment too well. They do seem in a little bit nicer of a place than Steam Deck. Aside from this one on the side, this is just kind of in the way and I've hit it a few times on accident. I don't actually map anything to this, so it's fine, but if you had a game where this did register an input, it would be annoying for sure. Well, the ROG Ally is out and it's a much more palatable size and form factor, but part of what makes this thing so special is the increased screen size, 8.8 .8 inches. While it does seem silly, if you look at the ends where the controllers are, it's much more in line with the Steam Deck size. So if you're used to using a Steam Deck, your hand holding position, at least distance wise, is gonna be similar. Actually using it, is the size and weight a big deal? The Steam Deck already takes some getting used to because it is quite large and this thing's even larger. In fact, it's so large that it's a little uncomfortable to hold it like this. Normally I carry the Steam Deck like this, because the screen does cover up so much of this bezel. The bezel's so small, which is nice, but it does mean that if you carry it from the front, you're gonna get fingerprint smudges all over the nice. The 8.8 .8 inch 144 hertz refresh, invaluable for playing a lot of certain games, especially shooters where you need to be able to see someone across the map. I found that playing things like Fortnite or Call of Duty were just a lot easier with that more screen size. Having this a distance of about 18 inches away from my face, which is about the distance from my eyeballs to my lap, a seven inch is perfect for playing non-shooter games, something like Elden Ring went spectacular on the Steam Deck. But in some of those games that are closer to AAA current titles, you are gonna get higher frame rates. So things like a lot of those From Software games where timing does matter. On the Steam Deck, I was getting probably about 35, 45 FPS playing Elden Ring, whereas here I can get 50 to 60 FPS. And that extra little bit does make it a little bit nicer to play. Let's talk about gaming performance. Spider-Man pretty much stays locked at about 60 FPS. That's turning a lot of the settings towards high and just kind of tweaking it. With the Steam Deck, a lot of times you have to put most of the settings towards medium to get playable frame rates. Even then on the Steam Deck, very similar, I could get closer to 30 to 40 FPS but here you get almost always 60. Now that game does require some nice timing, but not as much as Elden Ring. So it's not as big of a deal, but it just does look nicer. You can crank the settings up higher and get better frame rates. God of War, I was getting about 35 to 45, 55 FPS in here. Not as high as those other games because it is a little more graphically demanding. Elden Ring, like I said, 50 to 60 FPS. Sekiro, which is FromSoft's older title based in a samurai, was actually 
perfect for this as I could get very close to 55, 60 FPS. And that one has timing being so critical. And so just those fraction of a second being able to update to your eyeballs just a little bit better means that it's just gonna be a little bit easier to play. Fortnite, I was able to get several first place finishes playing Fortnite. And that's because I could get all the way up from about 90 to about 140 FPS with this thing on mostly high settings. Let's talk about Windows versus Steam OS. A lot of people, this is the biggest gripe and the biggest reason why you would want a Steam Deck because it does deliver you much more of a console-like experience. You just download a game from the Steam Store, launch it from the Steam Launcher, and boom, you're playing in a matter of seconds. The Steam OS also does have a very nice pause or sleep mode where you just hit the power button and you can leave your game in the middle of it. And when you pick it up later, it'll launch the game just where you left it. And it really doesn't use up that much battery when it does that. This does not do that at all. You have to basically boot up full Windows, get into Windows, then launch your game. The Lenovo software that was clearly designed to look like Steam OS does not function like it at all. So until it gets a little bit better, I would go ahead and recommend just turning off the option to boot into there and just boot into Windows. I went ahead and made my desktop large icons. I only usually have about six or seven games installed on any of these devices at once because I can't play 10 or 20 or 30 games at once. I work on those games. Once I finish them, I uninstall them and put in the new one. So I just put large desktop icons for all those games and I just launch them on Steam Deck. You're going to have to go in and mess with the graphic settings to get the perfect playable frame rates. And you're going to have to do the same thing in Windows. So that's kind of a wash. I would say for Windows, you end up needing to take about three to five minutes more per game as you install it to get it all set up. But when a lot of these games you're playing for 40, 50, 100, Elden Ring I spent 300 hours on. Is that five minutes over 300 hours really that big of a deal? Not as much as I would have thought. And being able to play non-Steam games like Fortnite on here actually is much easier. So although most of the Steam games are way easier on Steam Deck, the non-Steam games are way easier with native Windows installed. So. It ends up being almost a trade-off if you play a mix of Steam and non-Steam games. Battery life on both of these ended up being about the same. Most of the times, if I'm playing a fairly new game like a lot of the ones we just mentioned, Elden Ring, Spider-Man, Fortnite, I get about 70 to 90 minutes playing time. Now, yes, if you crank the settings way down, if you lower the refresh rate from 144 when you're playing to Fortnite down to 60, it's probably gonna last longer, but is it worth doing that? No, it's really not. Just play with a pluggable power source. I have USB-C available at my bedside, on my couch, in my gaming room. So there's almost nowhere where I would need to play untethered. I know that's kind of a bummer to think of a handheld, but if you wanna be sitting there in those areas comfortably and play longer than an hour at a time, you're gonna be plugged in. Most of the time though, when you're playing these type of handheld games, you're just trying to kill that 30 to minutes to an hour that you have anyway, so the battery life ends up being perfect. It is still annoying though that this device will not actually charge whenever you're plugged in. It provides just enough power to keep the battery level at the end. So if you played and ran the battery down and then plugged it in, it would not charge as you're playing. You'd have to turn it off and let it charge. That supposedly is something that can be updated via software and we're waiting for that update to come. But as of yet, it doesn't work that way. And that is annoying. The ergonomics of this thing are one of the worst things about it. The Steam Deck just kills it in so much better of a way. If you can see how the edges of the Steam Deck are rounded and they fit right into the contours of the meat of your palm, and this thing is very sharp. You can tell that Lenovo is a laptop manufacturer because in a lot of ways, you can think of this as a console that is shrunken down, and this you can think of a laptop where they just chopped the keyboard off and glued on some switch style controllers to the edges and it feels like trying to hold a laptop in your palms it just digs into them it's not very comfortable you do get used to it over about 10 or 12 hours and now it doesn't bother me as much you figure out a way to hold it all those annoyances though are worth the extra gameplay power and the nicer bigger screen now one of the nice things that this has is the fps mode if you take the controllers off of the sides the right one has a little switch on the bottom that you can put into 
a little holder and then use it like a mouse on a desktop and play sort of like a keyboard and mouse type of a feel. To me, that's just a gimmick. I'll never use it. I don't think it's that useful. Um, it is kind of nice that the controllers come off, but playing like a game in two hands, probably some games you can get used to it, but I just don't feel like it's the easiest and it just doesn't feel that comfortable to me. However, you can hook this up to your Xbox controller and this thing is very much like just a little tablet. In fact, it's a little bit smaller than the iPad mini with much, much thicker. It's uh, almost an inch thick. Pretty cool if you think of it as a tablet and because the kickstand is so good, the best kickstand I've ever used on any device ever, it even puts the pretty good Surface Pro kickstand to shame. That's how good this thing is. But since I don't plan to use the FPS mode, I found a 3D print that actually fits into the case where that FPS mouse attachment would go. And guess what? This is a little thing that you can connect both switch style controllers onto and it ends up being like a regular controller. This is actually very super handy. That means if you're on the go, you have a controller built in if you ever want to hook this up to a TV, play via HDMI and a hotel room if you're traveling and you don't have to actually pack an extra controller in the bag and it works so good. This is only about 35 cents worth of PLA 3D printing filament and so fantastic. Whoever designed this, I'll leave the link to it. Great job on that. All it requires is three M3 screws and it builds the little slot that it fits into just absolutely perfectly. The magic of 3D printing, guys. Very cool. And I love the fact that they designed it to fit directly into the carry case. Now, while we're talking about carrying cases, let's compare the carrying cases for the Legion Go and the Steam Deck. It's funny, even though the devices themselves are quite a bit different in size the cases are pretty close in size you can tell the go is just a little bit bigger but if you're traveling with the case it's actually not going to take up too much more room in a suitcase or a backpack to have the legion go and that's a nice thing i will say though that one of the nice things about the steam decks case is that it has a slot back here for you to be able to put the charge brick in there and the Legion Go does not. So you will need that extra space in order to do that. One cool thing about the Legion Go is that it has this little magnetic flap. And if you flap it up, there's a hole for you to be able to fit your USB-C in there. That's right, the Legion Go actually has two USB-Cs, one on the top, one on the bottom. And the bottom one's accessible through here so you can actually charge it while it's in the case. Now, I will note that the USB-C cable that it comes with fits through there, but I tried a few of my other ones and not all of them would fit. So if you travel with a different type of USB-C cord, you may have to see if it'll actually fit in there. I don't think I'll ever actually do that myself, but it's kind of nice that they gave you the opportunity to be able to do it. So which of these do I reach for most? Well, a lot of times the new thing is what you want to play on the most, but I don't really care so much about that. I'm not like super excited for any individual device. I just wanna play the games in the time that I have available, which is fairly limited. It's usually when I'm going to sleep or when I have a few minutes here or there. So I just want the best experience that I can get. I don't really care about brand. I don't really care about price. I just wanna use the time that I have to play the games that I wanna play. And I've been reaching for the Legion Go pretty much every time. I haven't turned on the Steam Deck in the week and a half since I've had this. I didn't think that would be ever something I would do because I played the Steam Deck almost on a daily basis and this has replaced it for me. I'm still gonna keep the Steam Deck and it's still a fantastic device. In fact, if I was gonna purchase, I would get the cheapest Steam Deck you can get. Right now, you can get a refurbished version of the low 64 gigabyte model. Buy that for 280 bucks, put in a one terabyte SSD for about 65 to 85 bucks. Bucks, then you're well under $400 and you have a really nice gaming machine. The Steam Deck, after all, is on par graphically with about the PlayStation 4. This is a big step up though. It's very close. For some games, it's gonna be equal to a PlayStation 5, but not all. Sometimes PlayStation 5 is still gonna edge it out for certain things. I used to be a PC gamer way back in the day in the original Modern Warfare 2 back way back when and then it just got too expensive to maintain a pc and console gaming was for me being able to buy a console for three four hundred dollars for many years just was way more economical than having to spend that every couple years to upgrade your pc but nowadays consoles are more expensive they're five hundred dollars and the games are 70 to 60 to 70 dollars and they rarely ever go on sale whereas steam 
For PC, you can get PC games for a really good price a lot of times. Being able to log into your Steam account on any type of these devices and download your whole game library. You don't have to go and rebuy all your games when you go from Xbox One to Xbox X or PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5 because you always have access to the latest version of whatever games that you already own by becoming a PC gamer. And now that you can do it for less than the price of a PlayStation 5 or a little bit more than the price of a PlayStation 5, but have a lot more flexibility, now's the time where a lot of console gamers are gonna just be done with trying to get a PlayStation 5 through scalpers prices. I know now they're finally in stock, but I just was such a turnoff spending over a year trying to get a PlayStation 5 and ultimately being unsuccessful. Now I'm pretty much all on PC and this allows me to do it on the go. Yes, I do have a gaming laptop that will perform better than this. And when I have time to go play in my office, I do use that. But if I had to compare how much of the 300 hours that I played on Elden Ring that I cover it portably on my Steam Deck, I would say probably about over 200 of those were here, less than 100 were on my PC gaming laptop. It's just because for most of us, we have more time to game from the couch or the bed or an airport when you're waiting for your flight or in a hotel room. It's just the magic of this type of a device. I really hope that they can shrink it down. I think eight inch would be a perfect screen size. I really feel like you could actually fit an eight inch screen in something that is closer to this size. So I'm waiting for that type of a device. I'm not married to any of these. I'm not a Steam Deck fanboy. I'm not a Lenovo Go fanboy. I'm just a fan of being able to play the games I want when I want. So as soon as that magical device that has the power of the Legion Go in this size, I'm gonna get it. But until then, Legion Go it is, fellas. Let me know in the comments what you are playing on. Are you still playing on console? Are you about to dip into something portable? Are you trying to figure out how much you should spend? I was very lucky that I got this one terabyte version through Best Buy Openbox for only $599, normally $750. And that helped tip the scales in me trying this thing out, knowing that for that cheap of a price, if I didn't want it, I could go ahead and sell it for the same price I bought it for. So no problems there. What games are you playing right now in the comments? Right now, I'm on Sekiro and Fortnite just to be able to test this thing. I played a lot of Fortnite to be able to test the FPS of this thing and I just really started getting into it. So I just kept playing for fun on the couch, in the living room, while the ladies are watching The Bachelor. Not a bad way to spend your time. If I had to pick which device gets my rose, it's gonna be the Legion Go for now.